Good evening, everyone. Today is the 27th. It's Sunday evening. I'm preparing this for the 28th, Sunday, Monday morning. There was a song they used to sing when I was coming up. You can't hide those lying eyes. It's time we realize that we have been lied to our whole life. The lies that have been perpetrated by the culture that we've been brought up in are horrendous and huge. From as early as I can remember, I was taught that we were a globe spinning through Earth, going around the sun. <laughs> and I was also taught that from a very young age that I had a free will. And I could do anything I wanted to do. All I had to do is decide, make a decision. And I could grow up and be anything I want to be. I also remember going over to my aunt's house for a pizza party when we landed on the moon. And watching them dance around, jump around on the moon for an hour. And Richard Nixon calling them from his office in the White House, calling the moon. And we still can't even get service across the street with the cell phones that we have. What an absolute joke, the lies that we have been perpetrated to by our culture. Also, the lie that if you get a college degree, you'll make more money and you'll uh, <laughs> excel in life. I got a college degree and got terminated from my position for refusing to place children with homosexuals. And now our culture is lying and saying that God did not create people male and female. He created them all kind of different ways. You know, it's just the culture is full of lies. And putrefying sores, the Bible says. <laughs> Well, I'm glad to know that we have a source that we can go to for the truth. We've been lied to about history. Most wars were fomented because of money. Most seminaries or for one purpose and one purpose alone, and that's to call theologians divine and to put man on the throne. Filling students' minds with lies that are not in the Bible and telling them this will not make them unreliable. It's not what they say they are, but what they say they are not. Saying they are not Arminian or into free will, even though that's what you're being taught and process regeneration until you get your fill. We are not dispensational, that is what some say, but they bring dispensational teachers in so they can have a heyday. We believe in the doctrine of election and predestination too, but listening to their professors will make a zombie out of you. You must think like Burkhoff, Vettner, or Billy Graham. How about getting your instructions from the one who said, I am that I am? I'm so glad I did not continue to attend one of these zoos, and I recommend that you stay out of them too. 
They'll put you in a cage and you'll never get out. Confused and most assuredly your salvation you will doubt. Roman Catholicism has been accepted as a true form of Christianity throughout the world. The Pope is a fraud, a true antichrist. This is not, this is the truth. I'm not being funny. He's saying he's God here on earth and you must confess to him your sins first. There's only one mediator between God and man and it's not the Pope. That's not in God's plan. There's only one name given among men. It is Jesus Christ, the forgiver of sins. The Pope sits on his throne and says, all have to go through me. I'm here to proclaim and let it not be concealed. The Pope is a man of sin. It's been clearly revealed. So proclaim it far and wide through the land. The Pope has deception in the palm of his hand. Let's give glory and honor to whom it is due as Jesus Christ who died for sinners like me and you. never ceases to amaze me how men want to take the glory for the works of his hands. When God's creation spans the heavens and tells the story, it takes a man a whole week to build a shed while Christ created the entire earth and man in six days instead. Yet man says, look at what I have done. God asks, where were you when I laid the foundations of the universe, son? Men brags about doing this and brags about doing that. His pride will bring him down and someday he will go splat. He will fall to the ground for God hates pride. It reveals to us what man really is on the inside. Let's start giving God the glory in these final hours for he's the only one that has the total power. The Bible is not just another book. It is God breathed the living word of God. It can be found in it can be found the words of eternal life. Whether we believe it or not is the question at hand. The Bible says we are born and conceived in sin and all that and all men died in Adam and all who are made alive are made alive in Christ. The Bible does not say that faith, belief, or repentance saves you, but it does say that Jesus came to save his people from their sins. And it does say that all that the Father hath given him will come to him, and all that come to him he will no wise cast out. The Bible says the Spirit bloweth where it listeth, and no man knoweth the sound thereof. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit of God. Christ also says you must be born again. So the Bible says that the first thing that must happen to a sinner is that he must be born again, and then he receives the faith to believe that Christ died for his sins, and then he will readily confess that he's a sinner in need of Jesus as his Savior. He will then trust in the completed work of Jesus Christ for him on Calvary as a perfect sacrifice for his sins. When this happens, the sinner becomes a new creature in Christ. He is no longer under condemnation and has received forgiveness on the merits of God's gift to him. And he now realizes that he was foreknown, predestinated, called, justified, and glorified. Either the word of God is true or it is not. Those who question his word must be considered a blot. They are calling God a liar and saying his word is unfruitful. Untruthful. By changing his word, this is unfruitful. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That's what we've been told. My friend, this is nothing more than spiritual gold. The word reveals to us the ancient of days, but it never grows old. Man seek to change it and ridicule it too, but God's word is unchanging and most relevant today. Don't mock the holy word of God. It will instruct you and give God's people comfort when they are oh so blue. 
Let us return to the Word of God, and we will find the good old gospel story eternally sublime. And let us give God's Word the honor it is due, for it will stand the test of time and always will be true. For well, how long will the haven rage and the people imagine a vain thing? They deny creation in six days and make man the authority and make God their puppet on a string. Just wait until God pours out his wrath and these mockers he pays. How long will they say it's okay to be gay when God strongly forbids it in his word? They want to take down God's people who strongly convey and say this is an abomination and God says you will pay. How long will they deny that God has his elect? They say that this would make you a robot if his own people he does select. The election in the word is exactly what Christ and his apostles taught. How long will they say that man has a free will? This is a denial that man is dead in sin. Wesley, Finney, and today others are teaching it still. They say man still has a spark of good in him. Yes, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The entire world seems to be going to hell, but the increased child of God, he is the sovereign king, and it won't be long until our journey is fulfilled. Well, I want to conclude tonight with this thought. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be focused on thee, for I know in myself there's nothing good in me. But I know that you died to save me from sin and death. You became the perfect sacrifice, and through your blood, God's conditions were met. So, with the words of my and thought, words with my words and thoughts, may I ever thank will be and express to the world what you mean to me. <clears throat> For I had no hope at all until your Holy Spirit breathed your breath of life into this dead man and saved me for eternity. Oh, what suffering you went through when you died upon the cross, separated from your Father, so my soul would not suffer loss. Thanksgiving and praise I must forever proclaim and honor and worship your majestic name. Why you showed mercy and grace to the likes of me, an undeserving wretch worth of, worthy of only hell, but with your abounding love, for which I cannot tell. Gave your son for me on the rugged tree to grant eternal life for a sinner like me. Thank you for paying the ultimate sacrifice and giving this sinner everlasting life. Well, I hope you have a good day this day. And let us remember that culture has pretty much perpetrated a lot of lies to us that have can be exposed by going to the Word of God and the Holy Spirit can reveal to us His truth. God bless.